Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On the Horizon Podcast. This week we've got special guest Ryder Ratliff. Ryder's my oldest son, and if you've been following Horizon for any time, you know he has got a lot of trigger time behind the 22 Creedmoor, a lot of experience on that. We just got back from West Texas on an odd ad hint that we're going to talk about where we specifically use the 22 Creedmoor and our new Vandal series of rifles for Horizon Firearms and a new bullet you're going to want to know about. This is a bullet we're going to talk kind of around, but I'm not going to give you the full scoops on it yet as we've got that coming out later in the year. But we do talk quite a bit about our new Vandal series of rifles and hunting with the 22 Creedmoor, of course. This week's episode is going to be brought to you by Horizon Firearms. Horizon is a truly custom rifle manufacturer based right here in Bryan, Texas. And uh, yeah, hope you like this week's episode. Be sure and like and subscribe. Let us know what you think. And here we go. Ryder, how's it going, bud? It's good. How does it feel to be out of school finally in summer? Awesome. <laughs> so, Ryder, you're going in. You just finished what grade for? Just finished fourth grade. At, and uh, how was fourth grade for you? Hard. <laughs> what, what, what was the hardest part about fourth grade? Uh, memorizing multiplication. Multiplication. Hey, but you'll come, you'll, uh, you'll come to use that Try. a little later in life. So one thing we thought would be cool today, um, when we were having Ryder on for a couple different reasons, so... Um, Many of you guys know that the 22 Creedmoor is super, super important to us. It's been a caliber that we've spent a ton of time on um, and have shot probably more rounds through that than anybody else has shot through the 22 Creedmoor. And we started thinking about it, and Ryder and I just got back from an odd ad hunt in West Texas. Uh, we actually took the 22 Creedmoor and some stuff we'll talk about later that we're working on, including these rifles here on the table. Um, but we started talking about it on the trip, and Ryder... We, we were actually developing the 22 Creed more the year that Ryder was born. And so cool. that is pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And so you probably have more long-term history. <laughs> and to show you guys like really how long we've been working on it, right? So Ryder, how old are you now? 10. But you're, you're and going on 11, 11 here in November, right? Yeah. So Ryder, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, just a little bit about the hunt we just got back from. Uh, it was pretty awesome we were up in the mountains and uh there was a lot of animals oh, absolutely what all we see antelope and pigs so we saw all dads pigs yeah we saw some native native texas elk and the uh javelina yeah javelina and mule deer and white tail and so yeah we got a got a really neat uh that's the first time i've been out actually i've, I've never i didn't think all that um White tail lives up there. Yeah, it was like a lot of rock and yeah. cat claw, and it was kind of cat fun. claw was horrible. <laughs> so describe what a cat claw is. I well, if, it, if, if you took a cat claw and put a, a razor sharp blade on the end of their um, claw. And, and turn it into a plant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went out. So we were in the Davis Mountains around Alpine, Texas, yeah. and uh, that cat claw brush, we were told beforehand that... Bring your... Uh, worst hunting clothes. It will rip them up. Which it did. I, yeah. I ruined, ruined a good pair of first light pants uh, trying to track all that in the in, in the cat claw. But so what we were doing out there, Ryder, we were testing two new SKUs that are coming out for Horizon. You'll be seeing these in dealers come August. These are our Vandal series rifles. And so we've got our Vandal rifle here in the back with the red coloring and the pins and needle fluting here. Uh, and we've got our Vandal X here in the front. Um, this is a little bit lighter weight rifle. It's got our uh, Echo X stock from IOTA on it. So 18-inch barrels on these, stiller actions, trigger tech triggers, and actually we're getting some uh, field times. These will be in some different price points that you've seen Horizon in and really getting a chance just to product test. And so, Ryder, what was the first animal ever shot with the Vandal X? A pig? Pigs, right, exactly. So oh, we, <laughs> yeah. Better got a chance to use the Vandal X. Uh, we got some video that we'll put out later, but um, around 350 yards on a pig. Yeah. And so get awesome. a chance to use that, and that was that was a lot of fun. So, you know, one thing we're trying to do with these rifles is obviously we're putting a lot of effort into the 22 Creedmoor and getting that out there and making it available for everybody and really proving that with some new bullet design that we're doing, which will be something else coming out, uh, we were getting a chance to test a brand new bullet 
um, loaded around that I think is going to be super awesome for hunting big game. So, how many? It worked how, well. It worked really well. Yeah. How many odd did we end up shooting this week? Ten. I think it was around seven, but seven. ten is close enough. Yeah. I mean, it was. It might as well have been ten. Yeah. Um, and what we learned a lot with this particular bullet is not a match grade bullet. And so, like, how many shots did it take to shoot my odd dad and your odd dad? Not including the really far one. The uh, the one on the rock that we were we were hoping to film was one yeah. shot, and then yours. Mine was one shot. Yeah. And what about the other one that I shot? Um, also was, one shot. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was kind of interesting with this new bullet and the speeds we're getting out of twenty-two Creedmoor. You know, we had a three hundred WSM uh, there as well, and actually we had a better kill results with the 22 creed more in this sample set that we even did with the big magnum cartridges which so super it's excited this cool was pretty neat they super excited i was honestly really really surprised at the how that went so tell us a little bit about your all dead hunt uh your your the very last one the big your big all dead so that one was um that one was fun because uh we uh so we were, we had saw him from quite a way and we had finally gotten the experience that if you tried to drive up on them they'd see you and run mm -hmm. so we snuck up and we got to a point where we shot him and it was it was i shot him a little bit far back so it wasn't supposed to go very far mm -hmm. or it was supposed to go pretty far and then we walked around down there and he he did not go mo more than maybe 20 yards yeah um and so we've got, and we, we went down there to um like mountain mounted him and this, we heard it, there was this weird sound that we kept hearing that was like a truck going down gravel basically and then i look up and there's these little like rocks falling from above us and i, I look in the in the um distance and there's a whole bunch of hail coming straight for us. Mm -hmm. I got hit with one. So if you look actually on the camera, Ryder's still got a bruise from this hail storm. Yeah. So it was kind of an interesting deal. We uh, So we, we snuck up on this all then. So yeah. we, we saw him from a long ways away, and he was a, lo a lone ram, which that was, if, if you haven't hunted West Texas, that was actually a, a harder part than, than what I thought is trying to get the cameraman and the hunter on the same group of rams. So we got yeah, the one that was going up the mountain. Yeah, how many how many rams were in that? Uh, he said we counted thirty five. Yeah, thirty five uh, mature rams. Rams like just rams. All in one big, all in one big group, and so it's kind of hard to get on. Um, so that that all that we ended up shooting at a little over six hundred uh, with the twenty two Creed more. It took a couple shots. The first shot we didn't judge the wind quite as well, but really nice all that. And then this one we snuck up. Like I said, we yeah. ended up sneaking up kind of down this gravel road and getting set up and. Ryder, tell, first, tell a little bit, um, you know, about how we were set up. How did we have the gun set up? And so, we had a camera on him, and then we, I, tr we were trying to get on rocks and stuff. So we, but they were like too hard. So we snuck up right up on the edge of the hill and put the tripod down. Yeah, and so you like, I know a lot of times when we we hunt with you, and that's one thing for guys who are getting you know, younger people in, you you seem to really like or feel comfortable shooting off the carbon tripods. Tripod or if the ground's not too hard on the ground. On the ground? I, I don't I don't really like without the um stand on without a stand. Which is kinda of why we picked this rifle here on the Vandal X. It's why Ryder was hunting with this one. If you notice we've got an integrated bipod rail in this one and so took the uh, BT, BT bipod off here and actually snapped it into the tripod. So it's pretty pretty steady at that point. Yeah. And so we ended up dialing, he was right around 300 yards, and then we shoot this ram, and like Ryder said, we'll put some video uh, in this clip here, but hit him pretty pretty far back. <laughs> I had to, because there was a few poles like right above him, so I had to shoot low, but then the wind messed me up a little bit back. Yeah, we were getting, like you were saying, we were getting in front of a front, and so kind of you can imagine when this bowl canyon and wind coming down off the bowl canyon. Would like move it. And uh, we, we we gave him a little bit. And then the storm coming. Yep, yep, and so we gave him a little bit too much. Actually, we dialed too much wind in that situation, 
um, which pushed him back just a little bit left. And so craziest thing, to be honest, I mean, we hit him kind of high and kind of in the liver area and we're able to film him running. And, and honestly, I, I thought it was going to be one of these have to chase them for a, a long ways. But like I said, he went about 15 yards and, and did really, really yeah, well. Yeah, we could see him from where we were shooting. Yeah. He dropped. So what were you thinking? I didn't see the head, though. It was what were you fine. thinking when Mr. David told you he could see the body? I was like, either he's still alive and he's going to jump up and run, or he <laughs> killed himself in a tree. <laughs> and so what were you thinking? We, we snuck up, or we, we, we knew it was there, and yeah. we, we walked up. What were you thinking when you first got a chance to see it? I was thinking he's pretty big. It's pretty cool. To, it's, it's a lot cooler to see him up close than it is to... Yeah. I mean, it's cool to see him running, but it's cooler to see him up close. <laughs> and then like Ryder was saying, it was crazy. We could hear some lightning that was getting super, super close, and there's really no trees or anything yeah. to hide under. And so uh, Mr. David said, hey, let's get back to the truck so we don't get struck by lightning. And then it stopped. We mm -hmm. went out, and, it, and as I was saying about the hail, got back in. The roads looked like it had just snowed. Yeah, that was I, I, I've never been in a hailstorm like that. And I feel feel bad if David's listening. Sorry about your truck, Mr. David. <laughs> yeah. But we got out and started. He got whacked in the head. He did. He's got a big bruise on his head yeah. from. So we got out and started caping the uh, the odd dad and and we got shooter marble size hail um, all yeah, over. The, uh, there was a few that there was like one and then around it was frozen more. Mm -hmm. So it was about a quarter or more. That's awesome. So what do you, uh, you know, as, as uh, you shot different guns, right? Yeah. You, you shot some different guns on uh, your elk and you, you've shot some with the, uh, on your antelope. So what do you think uh, about the 22 Creedmoor? It's, I, I think it's probably the best one I've shot. What, what do you like so much about it? It, it drops some more <laughs> easily. <laughs> and what about the recoil, like in terms of the kick? It not very much. Yeah. Especially whenever you have your like suppressor on it. You like it better with the suppressor. Yeah. On it. <laughs> it doesn't have much kick without it, but it's pretty loud. Yeah. Yeah. So this year, you know, when you butt. when you think about all the the hunting and stuff you've done this year alone. Yeah. Um, with the twenty two Creedmoor, tell us tell us a little bit about um, your deer season this year. Yeah, I uh, there was this special spike that had been wandering around for a few years, that. I shot, pretty cool, and then. What was what was so cool about that one? It was so there was like four or five points on one side, and then one giant long spike on the other. That's also pretty cool. And and did you uh you know what else was neat for me on that we you know like Ryder was saying we we work with him quite a bit. You shot your first deer at what five, with a twenty two creed yeah. And uh, so this year you got your hunter safety course. Yeah. How 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 was that? It was boring, but it was worth it. <laughs> I mean, I still look at those books at night. Oh, that's so, funny. Uh, you think the class was boring? It wasn't boring. It was just, like, more fascinating <laughs> than uh, boring. <laughs> so you got a chance to do the hunter safety course this year. So actually, you get to shoot these deer by yourself this year. Yeah. So tell me about when you're in the stand by yourself. Is that something exciting? Or what? why did, why did you want to hunt by yourself this year? I, I was just... Um, uh, it's just cool. It's like, it's not, um, it's fun. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, you get to, you have less chance of somebody scaring them off. <laughs> Cause you're by yourself. Yeah. So if you, if no, you there was this one time, I, uh, there was a, I was by myself and I was, I was about to shoot that spike and I was moving around to shoot him. And I accidentally stepped on the floor too hard, and one ran literally out from under me. <laughs> so what is your what is your process? I know you you you've shot quite a bit for a ten year old, right? <laughs> so how do you keep your nerves down, or what is your process before you shoot an animal? Well, I'd normally get pretty nervous at the beginning, but then I'd say hold your breath and you should. Of course, the Mainly, it's don't pull, like, mm -hmm. too hard. And then once I, sometimes, like, I get the feeling that they're going to turn, and so I don't shoot them, and then they do turn, and then they get in a better situation, and then I shoot them. 
So what, I know like we put some videos out on the 22 Cree more early. You shooting deer this year, pretty far away. Yeah. With and most of them all dropping right there. So where where do you when you're hunting? Where are you aiming most of the time? Um, pretty much in the shoulder, maybe a little bit behind mm -hmm. the shoulders to like, yeah, to get a little bit behind that bone. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, it was another interesting thing. You are right handed, but you shoot left handed. How is, yeah. how is that learning to shoot left handed? Well, it's not too hard. Uh, yeah, it's not too hard once you've, but like, it's easier, even though if you are right handed, you can, it, there's really no difference besides, besides pulling the trigger. Yeah. And holding. And you can actually run the action a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> well, I noticed we talked about that on this guy. We're yeah, using the Magpo style mags in, in these. And we've actually got some custom magazines coming out um, that will have Horizon logos and stuff on them. that will be in this. But these feed really, really well. Yeah. Um, like the this piece goes back and forth very easily. Yeah. Which was something we noticed like on my other gun that you used. We were having yeah, it was issues with. getting stuck. Yeah. So we had a... <laughs> We had a, another another product we're testing on on uh, the other rifle, and like he was saying, it just didn't cycle as well. Which one reason these polymer mags are nice and quiet, and you can hold five rounds in it. And, and these are just your normal P mag style, so yeah. super, super easy. After I so after I had shot my pick with this, uh, how many pigs <laughs> moving up? Twenty, maybe. <laughs> they ran right in front of us, and if we would have had the other gun, we would have been able to shoot one maybe, maybe because it would but this one we shot three and yeah. and they dropped in the road i'll i'll drop in the road yeah, yeah. And it was interesting too you know with this um with with this gun we we tested like i said the el well, i will say i better not say that we tested the new hunting bullets um uh, and these new hunting bullets we noticed a lot of stuff dropping uh big entrances now a lot of people are going to ask what kind of exit now on the bit on the odd ad size game we honestly they exit we and they exploded it. Yep. pretty big but it was interesting we saw a very very large entrance hole so on white tail we would see an exit with this bullet on smaller pigs i'd say under 200 pounds we we're seeing exits on the odd ad and the, the big, big pigs <laughs> We weren't seeing any exits, but we would see about a ping pong size entrance, and then the animal would be, you know, uh, I don't know, 15 feet or so. I actually got some video on one of the odd ads, uh, even with that, uh, bleeding really, really well, where uh, we also try with this gun shooting with the um, our Texas ammo, which is an ELDM bullet. Uh, the so one before grade. that, I think, and yeah. the new one shot better. Yeah. Well, it shot different. So, like, well, it, yeah. you know, it, with, the, with the offering we're offering on the varmint side of things, the, um, you know, the, the Texas ammo ELDM is great for the varmint side of things. This new bullet's going to be awesome uh, for the mid-size game. So, actually... I'm going to get to go to Wyoming this year, hopefully, on a mule deer with a 22 Creedmoor. We've actually also booked a... Uh, Make sure a hunt. you film it. <laughs> Absolutely. And we've also booked a um, blacktail deer in Oregon, which is something that I've wanted to do after living in Oregon for a long time, um, not getting a chance to, to shoot one. We're going to go with Jody Smith out there, and hopefully we'll film a blacktail hunt as well. So now, Ryder, you also got an opportunity this year to do a little bit of elk hunting in New Mexico. Yes. Tell us, tell us about that hunt. That one, that one, my legs were about to fall off. <laughs> it walked so. I wish I would have had my watch on. <laughs> I would have had so many steps. How, how far do you think we went? I think we measured about seventeen, eighteen miles. Yeah, that's about that's about right. And so, tell us about what do you think about elk hunting? It, it it's harder because like they may be sitting right in front of you, and whenever you walk up, they vanish. Yep. Like, there was one we were hunting, and we went around it to try to shoot it, but it was gone whenever we got there. So, um, tell us tell us how you got your bull. Uh, and, and there's fun about this. We may have to, Mom may have to mark this down. We may have to write some, uh, uh, so my wife is actually doing the video behind here, so it's kind of fun. It's a family affair here. We may have to post a picture of writers, um, your report that you did for fourth grade. So, you actually wrote this story yeah. as part of your report. So, tell, tell us the story on your hunt. So, it was um, fun because I got to use lots of kind of, like, exaggeration and to make the story more fun. 
but it mainly stays on the right outline. But um, it was, uh, yeah, it was good. So take us through the last night we're sitting there. We're it, we're walking around the mountain and they're calling all over the place, trying to can't decide which one to chase. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my mom's sitting on the porch just watching, and then she sees one come right up, and we run around the corner. We see it up on the mountain, shoot it once. It turns and faces us. I shoot it right here, and it drops and rolls. So we take the truck up the mountain road. That it, We happen to shoot it on that mountain instead of any of the other ones. The biggest <laughs> mountain. Yeah. Um, and uh, we could not find it. It was it was funny because it, it did not drop where we thought it did. It was further than we thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. And then and in my story it says, my dad said he was going to look in one more spot. <laughs> he looked in one more spot and there was my elk. That's awesome. So what did you think about on an elk, a little bit different than with this all dad and with the white tail, what did you think about having to carry out an elk? I carried out one leg and then I fell asleep in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> They were pretty heavy, huh? Yeah. I thought it was fine. He was actually getting get a chance to use the uh, 6.5 PRC, uh, which is kind of what we, we've used with Ryder on the big game. Although, you know, we, we've talked about this a lot internally, uh, and uh, we may may give it a try here in, in West Texas this year when elk season comes around, but I'm I'm pretty convinced with this new bullet that I would... I think it would have uh, killed it the first time I shot it. I, I, I think so. It's interesting. It's the uh, the speed and the RPMs on that bullet are pretty, pretty incredible, and like... Like we we're saying, anything from prairie dogs to animals. Yeah, they explode the prairie dogs. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I didn't think about that. We we use it in Montana too. Use that same gun in Montana on. You were, uh, shoot, you were hunting a bear, and I was, I we were driving around, and I was shooting prairie dogs. Well, that and uh, what do you call those things? Um, rock chucks. <laughs> I was about to say woodchucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe the same thing. I'm not real sure. Um, well, Ryder, you know, one thing we like to ask, you know, all of our guests and something to kind of think about here is, you know, as you, as you start looking at this summer and you look at next hunting season, well, actually, I'm going to ask this question a couple of different ways. What is one thing that you would like to hunt? So as you start, you know, progressing your hunting I know career, I've always wanted to hunt this, but I want to really hunt a clip springer. A clip springer? Yeah. Why, why are they clip springer? First of all, they're small, so you can carry them out easier. <laughs> Second of all, they're just, they're close, they're fascinating. How they can jump from rock to rock without slipping off. As for us, we'd probably slip off. That's awesome. That's very true, yeah. And so we're going to have to take you down. And then someday, someday elephant. Oh, okay. someday elephant, really? Huh, that, that one's not on my, not on my list. You have to, you have to talk to Mr. Sticks about uh, if he's got, el if he does elephants. Uh, one of your friends shot an elephant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They well. said they had to have a crane to lift it out of there. So you want to shoot the smallest thing and the biggest thing? Pretty much. <laughs> so what would you tell, uh, before we go into kind of our last question here, what would you tell a uh, another young kid who was wanting to get into shooting? What would you tell them in terms of, you know, practice or in terms of learning or, or something? What's something that you've learned that you wish you had known before starting? When I first started... I didn't know about the pulling and then it would move, and I still don't understand that. But um, don't pull. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you what have you learned on these kind of scopes too? This has been something we've been working on. How, what do you think about being able to dial? It's it's interesting that like like the olden days they had those one shot guns that if you if the wind was too bad you missed. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Nowadays. Like you pretty much hit them every time. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty pretty much. Sometimes it. <laughs> so no, it's a interesting system. So we've been using on on the guns that Ryder's been using. Been using a lot of these. Um, actually, we we use turrets. So like instead of using the CDS style, uh, so that we learn, we're using the the Sig range finders and the Kestrel app, and then actually giving you a dial two number. And so, what did you think, Mr. David was giving you the dial two numbers? Uh, that's I'll the like, first time. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so it's always it's always kind of funny to learn about. It's, it's weird because oh, it's not weird. It's just interesting because you're about to shoot it, and then they move, and you have to click up, and then click up, and click up, till finally they stop, and then you can shoot them. Yep. <laughs> it's not like it doesn't matter. You shoot them anyways. Yeah, it's just another thing to think about, huh? Yeah. 
So you you looking forward to getting uh, Rhett into? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Do you think uh, you think you'll be able to take Rhett on his first deer hunt? Maybe. <laughs> think you should though. Oh, you think I, you think I should? You taught me better than I can teach him. Oh, there you, well, I appreciate that, right? <laughs> so when you think about uh, kind of the last question here, we always ask on the podcast is, "What is on your horizon for the summer or for life?" Yeah, either way. What do you, what? For the summer, that I have a roping camp, and then for life, it's invent something cool. Oh, tell me about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was thinking the other day. I want to rebuild the Titanic. Oh, interesting. That's big aspiration. Way safer. <laughs> so you want? So when you when you think build something cool, what does that mean for you? Uh, design, make, and wire, like. A machine that does something that can help the world basically that's awesome and so you just got your 3d printer here yeah hi <laughs> it's going nuts with that and so how many things do you think you've 3d printed so far with fails or without fails without fails 17 18 awesome. things maybe maybe 20 it's around that with fails is probably 30. <laughs> Well, failing is part of it, right? Yeah. You learn. You learn. So one thing I want to ask you, so one, one section we do here, and we're going to do it here at the very end, on all of our podcasts, we have a speed round. So the 22 Creedmoor, it's typically 22 questions. It's fast lightning round, so you got to answer quick. Um, and so here we're going to do, instead of, and we've got some feedback, instead of doing the full 22 questions this week, we're going to actually hit you with seven or eight questions and let you rapid fire on these as we wrap up our segment uh, on 22 Creed more on the rifles here. Um, really, again, really looking forward to this August release with these new products, and I think it'll be pretty fun. We may see some catalog photos that Ryder took this week in our in our new catalog here. So Ryder, here we go with our lightning round and our 22 Creed more section here. What is your favorite animal to hunt? Uh, oh, Dad. Oh, there you go. Okay. So what is your favorite trophy that you have? The, um, like, I don't even know what the animal is called. Uh, uh, the big, probably the big white tail. I was going to say odd ad, but I already answered that. Nice. Nice. So what is your favorite scope to use right now? This one. This one? This here's the, <laughs> this is the, <laughs> Forgot the why name. do you like this one so much better? It zooms in better. So this is, this is a Night Force uh, C505. Um, which actually is really on yours. If I zoomed into like close, like all the way up, it would blur a little bit, and I had to mess with the blurring and stuff. No, yeah. this one did not. No, it was all the way in. Shot the pig. That's fair. I, I like the uh, it's, it's hard because I agree with you. This is a heck of a scope. It's on my other gun, the one he's referring to is an older Lupo Mark IV. It was the uh, that's the first 22 Creed more we've ever built, the first action that was Horizon, and the first scope that uh that i have when we kind of started the company so i have a really, really hard I not know that and i have a really hard time taking it off even though i know there's much better <laughs> better class out there now so if you were going to mount a animal would you rather have a skull mount or a shoulder mount <laughs> even though they're more expensive shoulder <laughs> would take up more space so what is your favorite hunting snack Ooh, i don't know um I, Godola bar. Okay. They're like, uh, I think it's Nutella. Okay. All right. Um, if you could be any animal, what would you want to be? Bald eagle, so you don't get shot, and uh, you can fly. <laughs> cool. So, what is your favorite wild game food or dish that we cook? Um, calf count, or not? No, no, wild game. So it has to be. <laughs> uh, I liked the. I like the cheese and meat sausage. Okay. So you like the summer sausage? Unless it's um, cougar. That one was a little uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> you did not like my mountain lion and summer no, it's, sausage. It's good, but I think there's better. <laughs> I'm just funny. Um, what is your favorite fast food restaurant? Uh, Chicken Express. Chicken Express. There you go. And then here, here's a, kind of the last, well, second to last question here. Do you have a favorite hunting tradition? Um, hunting prey, basically, okay. where we pray before we hunt. That's awesome. So that would be, that's your favorite hunting tradition? Yeah. That's awesome. And then, um, obviously, 
Last question we always ask is, have you ever shot the 22 Creedmoor? Yes. <laughs> Plenty of times. Plenty of times. Hundreds of times. Hundreds? I bet you shot it hundreds of times yeah. at this point. Probably. Uh, Dad's having to keep up with the ammo that we have. I guarantee you, you've shot <laughs> hundreds of pounds. Uh. So, well, Ryder, I appreciate you being on this week's episode. And guys, again, we are looking forward so much to uh, this week's, re or this uh, year's release of products on Horizon. We've got... Several new rifle lines coming out. Everything really focused this year on the 22 Creedmoor and being able to bring that round uh, just really across the industry from people riders age to guys who are looking for their 50th or 100th rifle uh, in a caliber that we feel is revolutionary. Um, and I think we've got some really exciting things coming out this year that are going to really uh, uh, impress the industry, specifically this bullet that we're talking about and really making this 22 Creed more not only a Texas round, but making it a national round on the uh, larger and mid-sized game stuff. So, Ryder, appreciate it, guys, and catch us next week on another episode of On the Horizon. <laughs>